What's happening guys? It's your buddy Grizz. And now that we've had a couple days to play Battlefield 4 post-patch and really get a feel for the new feel, <laughs> I thought I'd show you a few clips from a night filled of Rush and uh, give you my thoughts and opinions on the changes they've made to Rush specifically, as well as just some more of the more notable changes overall contained in the patch. And man, I haven't had a good night where all I played was Rush the whole night in quite a while, and I gotta say, it feels good, man. It feels good. So let's talk about Rush. Uh, the gameplay, or the weapons I was using in the gameplay, like I said, was just recorded throughout the evening. So I think there's the ACR, the LSAT, uh, I was using the AEK, and then I decided to snipe a little at the end with the FYJS. That was pretty fun. And the Gold Magnum, too. The Gold Magnum still, still continues to surprise me as such a good uh, sniper rifle. And spe just while we're still on the subject of weapons, I think I'm going to go out on the on limb here and say that the ACWR could possibly be the new god gun. It is so good after this patch. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm loving it. Anyways, let's talk about this, this rush change stuff. Uh, many of you know this is my favorite game mode in the Battlefield series. There's there's just something about this kind of objective play, like blowing up two bomb stations, that just appeals to me. Um, even if they are just random computers. What are what is so important that's on those computers that the U.S. Army needs to like blow them up all the time? Anyway, sorry about that. I just hit my microphone. Oops. Um, so yeah, I love how you have to fight your way through sections of the map here as I save. That was pretty sweet, that was a pretty sweet MCOM save at the end here. And uh, it's just, yeah, I find it like a unique, really unique game mode. And it's a lot of fun when your team is working together. Key, key word there, together. And obviously there's still some funny stuff happening, check this out. Uh, it says Kneebender killed me at first, but then it quickly switches to... Crazy Monjun or whatever his was, whatever his name was. Anyway, so let's talk about some of these changes here. Um, obviously, the first one that everyone knows about is that they've moved some MCOM stations around on certain maps. I don't know if I have any examples in this gameplay. Uh, I know they've moved some in Zavad. The last set is pretty different. It used to be up in that tower. Uh, one of them used to be up in the tower, and then the other one was right outside the building on the ridge or at the top of the hill there anyways both of those have changed to locations that are a lot better for the defenders uh, to be able to successfully defend so that's good um, I've already noticed a huge difference on some maps uh, I've noticed the attackers seemingly win a lot more than they used to which is a good thing because you know defenders should have the tougher job but also, I think that the vehicles should be in their favor as well. Unless the map calls for attackers to have the advantage vehicle-wise, just because of the natural layout of cover and whatnot, position of the MCOMs, etc. But uh, I feel like the attackers should have a little bit of an easier job than the defenders. It, the defenders should really have to work for it. And did you see that guy shooting on the way down? When that happened, I was like, you're not supposed to be able to do that! I thought you couldn't shoot when you are in the air, but... They, that was a, part of the patch is that you can now shoot in the air while you're falling, uh, so you but not jumping. So you can't jump and shoot, it's just when you're falling. Uh, but getting back to what I was talking about, um, another, a few, few more things that they've added is a countdown delay to the beginning of the rush games now. So your SSD is now useless. Not really. <laughs> it's still good to have, you know, a fast loading, uh, a fast hard drive I guess for playing games of this caliber like Battlefield 4 very demanding game and uh, they've also made this is this is amazing they've also made 100 tickets the default rush ticket value for attackers and I think that is just probably one of the better things that they've done for this game mode is increase the ticket value for attackers I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time uh, reading off some patch notes that I thought were noteworthy I guess. I'm not gonna read you the full patch notes obviously that would be pretty boring 
but I did want to mention a couple that I thought were pretty cool. And again, there's a lot of stuff on this list, so if you want to read the full patch notes, I'll leave a link in the description to that, and you can peruse them at your leisure. So let's start it off here. The uh, Some of the things that I thought were really cool was crosshairs and optics, scale tweaked, and visibility against light backgrounds improve. So what I think that means is the red dot sights are now easier to see against bright backgrounds, which... You know, that's good, because I always found that was an issue. I could never see the red dot if there was a bright background. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is just sort of aesthet aesthetically pleasing, I guess, but the helicopters and jets now affect trees and bushes, which were set up to react to wind. And I think that's pretty cool. I mean, Battlefield 4 is kind of like amazing graphically, so, you know, it's good that they put those little subtle nuances in there. I like it. Um, fix for elevators on Dawnbreaker being active on Domination and Team Deathmatch and stuff like that. Yeah, that was pretty stupid, so I'm glad they fixed that. Um, this is cool, they've added a high latency indicator uh, to give people a better idea when they're experiencing lag. They've added the classic game mode, which is actually uh, some of this, I think the AEK portion of this video is from classic mode. It's pretty cool. It's basically hardcore if you had your HUD. Yeah, it pretty much sums it up. I like it though. Um, let's, let's keep going down this list. Reduce the time it takes to display the incoming damage indicator, and that is probably another one of the biggest gripes people had about Battlefield 4. That's what you used to experience as one-hit kills, like it just seemed like you just took one bullet and you were dead. But really what was happening was he was shooting you long before your screen ever showed you that you were being shot. So looks like they've fixed that, which is definitely good. The smoke effects are bigger, higher density, and they last longer, so those infrared sights are going to be uh, much more useful now when, in, when combined with smoke grenades and the like. Uh, let's see what else. Updated player icons to show shield variant when using the defensive field upgrade for enemies. And that's awesome. And when and you'll probably notice it a lot in this game in gameplay. Sorry, You'll see like a weird shield emblem above the guy's heads. Uh, it's, it's different from the normal orange Dorito anyway. And that just basically means that they're using the defensive perk. So you know, be prepared to add a couple extra bullets to your uh, kill time. Um, oh god, I lost my place. Added functionality to be able to shoot while falling, I mentioned that before. Fixed an issue where the health and ammo box would block the line of sight for defibrillators, and that is uh, what was causing that issue where you'd be trying to revive someone and it wouldn't revive them a lot of the time, and I think that might have been causing an issue was the fact that there was probably an ammo box or med kit in your way, which Again, really silly. Glad they fix it. Visual recoil! I've, I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But the close range sights, everything except for the iron sights, IRNV, and FLIR, the infrared sight, and all the medium range sights have been changed to no longer be affected by the animation of the gun recoiling. So your red dot will stay in the middle of the screen, giving you a better idea where your bullets are headed. Gah. That's always good. <laughs> and uh, the added UI options for tweaking the ADS aiming sensitivity in the advanced options are pretty cool. You can, so if, you're, if you decide to snipe, you can go into your options real quick and drag your ADS sensitivity down to like 60, you know, so you still, you're still able to whip around pretty quickly if you're not aiming down sights, but once you go into your scope, you can sort of fine tune your aim a lot easier because it won't be, won't be as sensitive. And finally, there are just a couple weapon tweaks that I found really interesting and also worth mentioning. Um, the muzzle brake, heavy barrel, and the lasers have all been changed. Muzzle brake's effects have just been decreased overall on both sides, so negative and positive effects have been decreased. Heavy barrel has had its spread increased reduced, and I know that sounds a little weird and convoluted, but it just means that uh, tap firing at distance is going to be a lot easier, so that's good news. And the lasers have had their standing hipfire accuracy increased, so that's good for no scoping recons. <laughs> Another great thing is the trigger delay on all the revolvers is completely gone, so uh, yeah, that's good news. The uh, Magnum, the Rex, and the Unica no longer have that 
dumb trigger delay. I know it's not really realistic to not have it, but, you know, whatever. It's a video game. Uh, and the Deagle's been nerfed, so, yeah, it's definitely time to put that big iron on your hip, boys, because the Magnum's gonna be so much better now. Uh, another great thing is the god-awful DMR snappy sound has been changed, so it's a lot less annoying, and I know a lot of people are gonna be happy about that. The last two things that I find particularly interesting and awesome, so check this out. The MBT Law, big change. If you want to read the technical way that DICE put it, go read the notes, but basically, this thing will no longer track random vehicles between you and your intended target, and you'll need to aim a lot more accurately to actually engage the target. So, and also it's it's gonna start targeting at 100 meters instead of 15 meters, which was kinda silly, let's be honest. But uh, now it starts tracking at 100, so the guy in the tank has a bit more time to react to the lock warning. Slams are another big change in my opinion. Three slams will no longer take out a tank. It'll only disable it. So you probably can't just, you know, toss them out and move on and hope for kills anymore because probably gonna have to stick around with your launcher to finish the guys off. Check out this. I've been getting a lot of these lately, but ow! Collateral headshot. Wicked. Um, yeah, so you need to stick around with your launcher to finish it off. One rocket should do the trick. So those are basically the highlights that I thought were particularly interesting from the full patch notes. Like I said before, there's a lot more info on a lot more changes, so if you want to read them, uh, you can find the link in the description down below, or just look on the recent posts in Battlelog, you should not have much trouble finding it. All in all, I'm really liking the progress that's been made with this patch. I feel like DICE and EA, uh, yeah I know, I hate, to say it, I hate to say it, but I think they deserve a bit of a nod too. Uh, they're really trying hard to work out the kinks with Battlefield 4, so all us CTE players have to keep playing in the test environment. Keep it up. We have to keep giving our feedback to the fine folks at DICE LA, because look how far it's gotten us. I personally think the state of BF4 is getting better, the game is healthier, uh, working a little better, but let's also be rational here, there's still a lot of work to be done as well. So get on the CTA, uh, CTE and take part in the forums give them your feedback because clearly they're listening and I think the improvements made in this patch speak very clearly to that. I myself want to be more active in on, on the forums too, I really need to practice what I preach I guess. But anyways that's gonna wrap things up for me today, hope you all enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber of mine I would love for you to join us and as always comments are always welcome. So if you got a question about the patch, or personal question for me, questions about life, anything of that sort, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments section down below and I will surely get back to you. Thank you all as well for your continued support, it always gives me warm fuzzies when you guys send kind words my way. So yeah, thank you once again, take her easy bud, and we'll see you soon, eh? See what happens when we mix...